many times, you know, we have a sense of, uh, of fulfillment. And we think we could uh, so-called fix the world and so on and so forth. And your rabbi will come and tell you, listen, you are at a certain stage, of, actually not even a certain stage, in all stages of your life, this is this person in which you affiliate yourself with, you know, it's not really that good for you. I think you should cut your losses with him and just cut, cut him loose. And then you would come and argue, well, Rabbi, you know, I'm trying to do kiruv to him, I'm trying to help him out. And then the rabbi will tell you, well, listen, what example do you give your, your children? This guy is, you know, is married out of faith. He has children that is married out of faith. He sends them to a school, a Jewish school, which he pays tuition to, and so on and so forth. What example are you giving to your kids? Well, I'm giving the kid the kid the kiruv. Really, you're giving him kiruv, or you're giving them a message that you know it's okay. So what do you do? You switch your rabbi. That's what it is. One needs to know. And Sirat Yisharim writes that, and the other hand, the Zohar as well that everything that happens in this world, HaKadosh Baruch Hu puts you, is an isayon for you, is a test for you. For one hand, the Mesilat Yeshari writes, on one hand, having a complete peace of mind, you don't have to worry about anything. And the other hand, Daga, being hungry, or, or it's the doctor, if it's the doctor, take it. Okay, so go listen to it. And on the other hand, you have the worries and the agot and, and you know, you're scheming for you, for you, for a penny and so on and so forth. Both, both are in Isayon. On the one hand, you're going to have the riches and the tranquility of going here or going there, and you're going to forget about HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So instead of loud, that you have the peace of mind. And instead of coming to learn, you will go to, uh, you know, Caribbeans, you go to Cancun, you go whatever you people do, you know, and you don't really find a Kadosh Baruch Hu. I mean, he's there, but you know, you don't go to Cancun to look for God. On the other hand, not having understanding and emuna when you need the dollar will bring you to be dishonest, cheat to lie, to steal, and so on and so forth. So yes, on both ends of the spectrum, everything is a nisayon. And the Zohar says, Rabbi Yehuda Patach, Rabbi Yehuda says, on the Pasuk on Yeshaya, Isaiah 2, Chidlu lachem mina adam asher neshama ve'apo. Just let go of the man who has a soul in his, in his nostril. What does it mean? Ki b'ma'u nechshav. What is it really a person? We put so much faith in people that we also forget about HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It says, Kan Siva HaKadosh Baruch Hu, here HaKadosh Baruch Hu commanded man ve his hero and warned him, she yishmor atzmo, he needs to watch out. You do your work. He needs to watch out from the people that tilted their ways and shifted their path from a good way to a bad way and filled themselves and unpurified themselves with that tum'ah so that person knows what it means to be a Jew he knows he should not marry out of faith and he doesn't care. He would say, well, you know, who said that the rabbis are right? Who said this and that? And so why did you bother to con so-called convert her in reform or conservative? Why? You shouldn't have. 
should be honest. So he deliberately met Tame himself. And you're going to bring this Tame into your house to give your kids an example how to purify him? He doesn't come to learn. He doesn't want to learn. And you, did you have enough Torah in you to purify it? Are you purified yourself? Before you're going to bring this in? Did you finish working on yourself? And it says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu made man b'tzurah el yonah. V'nafach bo ruach kedosha, and he put inside a holy spirit, haklula mishalosh, that human spirit has a nefesh ruach on neshama. The neshama is above all. That is, koach ha'elyon, lishmor mitzvot HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When a person is in touch with his neshama, with his superior part, he lets that part guide him, and that's what motivates you to keep the, 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 mitzvot, the mitzvot of the Torah. V'imachnisa neshama kedosha hai ba'avoda acheret. Now if you take it and you put it in other, let's say avoda zara, or so on and so forth, metame ota. You make it impure. The reason why you left your natural inclination to do what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you, it's in each and every one of us, is because somewhere along the line you unpurified your soul. And that caused you to do something else. The reason why you left faith, Michael, go upstairs, go upstairs. The reason why you left faith is because you took your soul and you unpurified it. That's why people leave. People don't just wake up in the morning and say, okay, one day I'm out of faith. I'm stopping keeping Shabbat. Or I don't want to look for it. And if a person made shuva, means that at least a segment of that neshama was not, it stayed pure. Or his tikkun is on a lower level. He doesn't need to fix his neshama. He's there. He's still pumping. It was just covered a little bit. It wasn't impure. It was maybe covered. And it says, Mishum shlosha kochot elu kulam keyachad. Because of those three powers inside of us. Nefesh, ruach, or neshama. When they are together, that's, that's what a person we see. If a person has those levels, uh, he knows... Uh, he knows who is his, uh, what's his job in this world, who should be his friend. As they say, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. So you're going to look very carefully who you have at your table. And if you want to judge a person, should I be close to him or not, look at the way he conducts himself. If a person is or wants to grow and develop and do and to and to evolve in Avodat Hashem, that's who you should be close to. And if the person is not, cut your ties with him, whoever the person would be. So if your aunts, let's say for you, you have aunt, not aunt, you know, aunts, you know, like aunts. Uh, let's say you, you comes to your house on Shabbat and babbles and cries and, uh, and, and being nasty about you keeping Shabbat. Why do you keep Shabbat? Why do you do this? It's, you know, you know, there's a regular routine. Once you have your home, cut, you'll cut your ties with your aunt. Why? Because she would influence you. She will put the doubts in you. She would cover your neshama. And then when one day you're going to feel a little down, that ant will come and will take over you. All the stuff that all those years that this dear auntie of yours had bombarded you on your Shabbat table, Shabbat after Shabbat, time after time, one day they're going to erupt. If you want to be a person who gives, you have to learn how to give. So go to a person, learn from someone who dedicated himself to giving to others. 
So I'll tell you who you are based on who the people you gravitate to. So if you go, if you are a selfish people, most likely you're going to gravitate after selfish people. If you are a con artist, and it doesn't make a difference what you're conning in, could be uh, business, could be religion. That's how you're going to go after. These are the people you're going to associate yourself with. And if you're truly a spiritual person, therefore it would not make a difference. And if you are seeking truth, and therefore it would not make a difference who the person is, you're going to seek closeness to that person. You will find more in common with a person like this than with your own brother who goes the other way. So look very carefully around you and understand why you came to this world because you came for this world for one reason and one reason only. To find a Kadosh Baruch Hu and to go in His path. Each and every one of us has a different journey to reach the same goal. One reaches us from here, one reaches that from there, but we're all going to the same goal. But if you see somebody is going out in the other way, he doesn't share the same goal. So if he doesn't share the same goal, why do I have to spend time with him? Why do I have to take a chance that he will distract me also for my goal? Because if it was for anything else, you would not let this happen. If you have a business and your goal is to make money, and I will be a person that will come to your store or will come to your business and talk to you all day long and make you miss telephone calls and make you miss customers and so on and so forth. And you're going to lose business. Are you going to have time to talk to me? And say, listen, yesterday was enough. Do me a favor. I, I, don't, I just don't have time. with." So why, when it comes to faith, you're allowed to do so? I'll tell you why. Because of the arrogance inside of you. Because you think you can. The truth of the matter is, not only you can't, you're not allowed to. And that's what a person needs to know. And it's a, and, but if a person is an Eved Neeman of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, dedicates his work and his life to serve Hashem, Tzarich Litchaber Elav, you need to connect to him, Lilmod Et Darko Mimeno. And you have to learn how to do it. So if you are a selfish person and you want to work on yourself and you're really honest, say, okay, I'm selfish, go to the most unselfish person and learn. The problem is you would never acknowledge it. If you have, let me give you, it happens many times in a Rebbe student relationship. If, let's say for example, you learn by someone. You have two people. They were learning by a Rebbe. And student A will go to student B and will say to him, our rabbi is like a guru. Is a cult. And we speak badly about the rabbi. In other words, he was spit in the well which he drank from. And student B will confront him. So instead of saying, what have I done wrong? He would say, how dare he? Instead of examining what you have done, you will blame the other. You would fail to recognize the Tum'ah that lived inside of you, that brought you to become so ungrateful. And that, I'm using it specifically, Rebbe, to a Talmud, because this is exactly what we do to a Kadosh Baruch One day you did it to your Rebbe, tomorrow you'll do it to God. And it's guaranteed. It doesn't care if you right now learning in Ponovich. One day you'll do that. So, you need to be honest with yourself. Honest with yourself. To list all your bad things, all your bad attributes. 
And sometimes, if you are really a truthful person, you need to go to your friend and says, listen, you know, I consider you to be a good friend of mine. I just want to ask you a personal question. Can I have your bank account now? <laughs> I want to ask you a personal question. You know, we spend four, five, six, three, two, one years together. Do you see anything in me that you think that I should work on? That I should improve in myself? Do you see anything in me that is not a good quality that I should chop? Who does that? So when your Rebbe comes and tells you, listen, what do you do? You switch your Rebbe. When a Kadosh Baruch tells you, listen, don't do that, what do you do? You switch a God. Not because you have a desire to worship God. You have no desire to worship any idols. You don't have any desire to worship anything. You only have a desire to worship yourself. And therefore selfishness is the biggest tumah of all. Selfishness is the most severe tumah of all. And I explained to you many times the greatest tumah of Baal Peor or originated in selfishness. So those who are selfish should really take a good look at themselves to make sure that the neshama is not affected to the point they will be considered to be almost idol worshippers because whatever they do is not for Hashem. They do it for themselves. And today, Mezat Hashem, we're going to do Parashat HaShavua, Parashat what? Tetzaveh. It's all about building a Mishkan. So before you go and you build a Mishkan, the Mishkan will be like building your house. Are you building a house also for yourself? Or you build a Mishkan for Hashem? Building any house of worship other than the houses of worship of God is idol worshiping. So a person is like a Mishkan. So you need to make sure that you're clean. So there's nothing wrong if you reach out to people, reach out to your friends, reach out to your mentor, to your Rebbe, and see what you could improve so you could become a better servant and entitled to become a servant of Hashem, not a servant of yourself. Good day.